This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. The current substance of choice is heroin. My pattern of use is every day, all day, and as much as I can afford, and then some. As much as you can get in my body, I'll take. God knows what he's actually doing out there on the street. I mean, I don't think he's controlled anymore. It's just, it's nonstop. Drove around looking for people's gas to steal. The moods change constantly. He's depressed. He's off. My whole life revolves around drugs. Nothing gets done or determined or even thought about till I get high. I make no decisions till I'm high. Um, I wake up, I gotta get high. Just recently, I started doing some stuff, um, a lot of stealing. Eric's gonna do whatever it takes to fuel his addiction. He's stealing gas, siphoning gas for his vehicle. You can't leave nothing in the yard around here. He's going into people's yards and taking anything he can sell to a junkyard or a pawn shop. Now we're off to the scrapyard. Scrapping, copper, aluminum, anything he can find just to make a couple dollars. Committing crimes that he probably, personally, I don't think he would ever do. He's getting into fights. He's been arrested for assault and battery. Things that you used to look at other people and be like, God, that guy's got a problem. You know, I'll never get like that. And all of a sudden, you are that guy. If we get 100, we're going to Brockton. We get three for 100 in Brockton. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's the, the money maker. But I could kill less. They just want to get high. He can't hide the fact of what he is now. He's completely different than what he used to be. Growing up, my father worked construction, and he's always worked real hard. Eric was still one who clung right to me, out in the yard working. He was always right there with me, always concerned. He always looked forward to uh, me coming home and wanting to play. I was his little buddy, too, you know? I always. Saturday mornings, I was right beside him. I wanted to go into the city with my dad. I, I looked at my dad like he was the strongest, toughest guy ever. He still is, you know? I still look up to him like that. Joe took his job as a, as a father very seriously. Tried to teach him what is right and wrong, you know, be an honorable person. You know, whatever you want, you have to work hard for. If you could pay for eight hours, you work eight hours. You know, put your best effort into no matter what, you, what you're going to do. He had to have instilled that. I mean, he's got two sons that they're both police officers now. I mean, and even Eric was in the military. His best friend OD'd last January. And a month later, Eric OD'd. You can't do it sober. You feel bad. You can't. You don't have the balls to do it. It was July of 1999. It was Eric's. Uh, had just graduated high school. Roof collapsed on me, and I fell. My husband was in a 
hospital bed in the living room for six months. He had a couple of surgeries. I couldn't walk. So if I got out of bed, I would li literally have to crawl on my knees. Eric stepped up. He went to work and still did the jobs. He would give up his own passion to help his dad. That was a very trying time. He was shooting me up when I was driving. I couldn't even look. I was going like this. That was the first time I got high on heroin. I wasn't um, vigilant enough. And the next morning, the first thing I said when I woke up is, I ran across that sand. I, I feel as though I feel a big responsibility that, that I put him in that situation. My father's just worried sick, the stress of Eric. His son's killing himself. And, and you know, I think he's resorting back to what he used to do, just drink. That way he can sleep at night. Seems like he drinks all the time now. I, I can always smell it on him, no matter what day or time. If something happened to him, I would blame myself. That I didn't do enough. It's the worst situation that somebody could be in. It saddens me to see you becoming someone different. I'm concerned that you're going to die or hurt yourself or hurt others if you continue your drug use. You, you don't seem concerned about your health, your appearance, or that you have become an addict and a thief. We both need to recover from our own addictions. I realize that I need to go back to AA because everything we've tried hasn't helped you. I cannot let you stay at a house anymore. I cannot lend you any more money. If you do anything to get yourself kicked out because you think you're feeling better or you think it sucks or you don't like it, you can't come back here. We will not pick you up at the airport. We won't bus stop. You can't even stay. You have to do this yourself, and you have to move forward with your life. I'll, I'll do whatever I have to. I really want to make the greatest comeback and make everybody proud. And I love you guys. Love you all. I'm ready. All right, let's see what he All right, bro. All right, let's go. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I know it's going to be fine. I just didn't expect this at all. I love you. Love you, too. Love you. I've been sober for 84 days. It's the longest I've ever had, and it means a lot to me. It's it's been a it's been a good road. It hasn't been a rocky road. It's been a good road. How do you feel? feel good. Feel good. Awesome. He's done a complete turnaround. For myself, I have to practice what I preach to my son. Oh, you look so good. I can't be uh, a hypocrite because I think that's going to hurt him. Today, I want to be a good son. I want to be a good brother. I think I look better. When the time's right, I want to be a good husband and a good father. When, when God feels I'm ready for that and he puts somebody in my life, that's, that's who I want to be, just a good person. That's it. That's all I want.